Parkinson's disease is easily diagnosed, yet people under the age of 50 are often misdiagnosed because of their age. Because of the Parkinson's, it was the wrong medication for her. So we went through a spell, uh, well, actually for two years, being on and off these medications. They'd put her on them, and she'd start getting worse, and we'd work off of the medication. Then the symptoms would come back again. Then she would go back, they'd put her back on the medication. And we went on and off the medication probably three times. I was just terrified. I didn't know what was going on with my body. I was stressed with graduating. Um, I thought it was just stress and anxiety. And went to the neurologist. He did a few tests on me. Uh, swiveled my ankles around, saw the rigidity. Did an eye test, put his finger between my eyes to see if I would blink. Um, just simple little things. Touching my fingers together and coordination. And uh, he left the room and I'm going, oh my God, what is, what is he going to say? So it was just a very quiet, long moment until the other doctor came back in and she examined her just for a few moments and checked her, uh, the rigidity in her arm when she tried to move it and uh, again did the tapping test between the eyes and um, conferred with the other doctor that she felt it was Parkinsonism and that she needed to go for further testing. I went to an endocrinologist and he told me that I did not have Parkinson's disease. He said, you are very healthy. And I said, then why am I shaking? And he said, well, I don't know. And I said, do I have Parkinson's disease? He said, definitely not. You do not have Parkinson's. I said, how do you know? He said, well, you're way too young. She said that that was part of the problem was they didn't really look, at, wasn't looking for Parkinson's first because uh, uh, they said that I was young for that yet. I was told that most people were over 60 years old that, that uh, had Parkinson's disease. But uh, what happened, they, when they run out of different things to try, they put me on some cinnamon and I did get some favorable reaction and the doctor said if you respond to Parkinson's medicine, you probably got Parkinson's disease. Once diagnosed, the doctor and patient have to work closely together to start a treatment regimen. Um, the, the main uh, keystone therapy in Parkinson are the Cinemet, and these are the, this is the constant release formulation or long acting in the two uh, strengths that are available. There's also short acting Cinemet, which is also available in generic form. Then we have the dopamine agonists, and uh, we have the Permax, which is one of the older drugs, along with Parlodel, and then Requip and Mirapex, which are the newer drugs. And um, we have the, the newest uh, booster as well, which is Comtan, uh, and um, it also boosts the effect of Cinemat, it just by a different mechanism than, than these three. People with young onset Parkinson's disease will initially very robustly respond to the same medications that are used for regular Parkinson's disease, and you'll get a, a, a duration where, where things are going very well. However, people with younger onset of Parkinson's disease more quickly develop complications of treatment, and these complications we call fluctuations. Uh, the most common fluctuation is dyskinesias, and these are these uh, very dramatic wriggling, writhing type of movements uh, that you see. People with very young onset Parkinson's disease typically will get this after a year or two, only a year or two of treatment with the medicine. So you only have a, uh, this, this one or two years of a very uh, a, a easy treatment period before you develop these uh, complications. It makes it much more difficult to treat. And she came back and said, well, I, I believe you have Parkinson's. Um, we have medication for it. and." And uh, we would guess that uh, if it works, you, it probably verifies what our, our, my uh, uh, diagnosis. And uh, my best guess is that uh, with the medication, you, you'll have three to five years of relatively good life. And, and that was basically it. It was uh, 
onward and upward out to do and start on the medication, which worked very well in the beginning. Um, and in fact, did give me my three to five, more like three to six. Um, if I happened to miss taking my medication, the Myropix, um, I noticed that uh, um, my body begins to give me signals. First, my muscles, especially my legs, and especially the lower portion of my, my legs begins to have this very tight feeling. And then um, uh, my, the other muscles begin to, you know, it seems like they're just slow, slowing down. And uh, I'm not as, if I try to do the normal activities, it's much more difficult. I have to take a longer time. I have to be more, I take, I, I'm more, much slower. I held off four years before ever taking medicine because I knew from what I had read that it would be a short time. I sensed that it would be a short time. Nobody really knows because nobody, no two people are exactly the same with Parkinson's disease. But so two years ago I started on Mirapex and I went from feeling like I had to pull myself out of muck in the morning, promising myself I would have a nap soon, to getting up at five in the morning and I'm ready to go. The, uh, the treatments over time do become less effective, and that's uh, really two parts to that. One is that the actual effect of the medicine will get shorter and shorter and shorter, but even more problematic is that uh, the development of these dyskinesias and side effects where after you take the medicine you get too much movement. And it becomes a very fine line where you're trying to balance this out. And we call those patients fluctuators, when they're fluctuating between either being very stiff and having the actual Parkinson's and then being too loose and having too many movements like this, having the dyskinesias. And it's just up and down all day, every day, and we don't know how long each symptom she's having is going to happen her on times and her off times. It's, it's just too inconsistent. Parkinson's is, is, a, is a tricky disease because, uh, because at one moment when you're on, you, there's not many things you can't do in the very beginning. And a short while later, which at early onset, if it's a slow progression, might be six hours or 12 hours after your med intake or whatever, might be a cycle of 12 hours. Or somewhere in that cycle, you may have a time where you, you can hardly do anything. And, and when you ask for help at that time, the person that had just seen you, had just watched you, you know, putting a tile on your roof or something, considers you fully competent and capable and a slacker. For some Parkinson's patients, drug therapy has little effect. For these patients, surgery has become a viable option. Dr. Leanne Burnett. Thalamotomy is uh, where you uh, drill a burr hole in the brain and go in with a probe and try to kill off a tiny number of cells in the thalamus which uh, uh, are part of the tremor generating mechanism. Uh, the thalamotomy I had in 96 was a huge success. I had tremors so bad that I couldn't hold a glass of water, uh, virtually couldn't feed myself. Uh, and when they got done, when I come out of surgery, it was like it is right now and it's been that way ever since. Uh, it was wonderful success in one sense, but I thought, I was elated, I thought that my Parkinson's is under control. But a short time later, I started getting tremors in my right hand. And they progressed in six months more than my other, my other tremors had done in as many years. We now also have, instead of freezing cells, we can put in a stimulator. You put in a probe that overdrives the cells, and it's attached through under the skin to kind of a battery pack. And um, the advantage of that is um, that you can turn the stimulator on and off. And I had tremors bad in my right hand. But a thalamotomy, again, was not recommended because of the risk involved. But they had this new procedure called a DBS, or a thalamic st uh, stimulator. And uh, I opted to have that done in 98. What the, the, having the thalamic stimulator in installed does for you, the wires go to the base of the brain into the thalamus. They go through, they put them through here and go down my neck into my chest and they give me a magnet to use to save battery life. And what this works is, is you turn it on and it's just that dramatic. And then when you get ready to turn off, when at nighttime you don't tremor, so it, you don't need to be turned on and it saves your battery life. And that's what that's done for me.